Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unru and today we're going to do a little bit on equilibrium. So let's do a basic intro to equilibrium. Okay, the idea here is that throughout General Chemistry 1 in particular, we spend an inordinate amount of time talking about the reactants and the products and the fact that reactants go to products. Okay, so what we tend to think about is we tend to think about a single headed arrow. Reactants go to products, that's how it is. Life is good, okay? The problem with this, <laughs> biggest fundamental problem with this is this is not how most chemical reactions go. Most chemical reactions have some, uh, definitely have some uh, amount of reactants going to products, but then, then you also have some reverse reaction, that's what we call it, where the products go to the reactants and you get what we call a double-headed arrow which is what we're showing here, right? So that thing right there, this lovely entity, is an equilibrium arrow. Okay, what does equilibrium actually mean? What equilibrium means um, is that you will have the reaction go from reactants to products and then back from products to reactants until the specific point where the rate of the forward reaction, going from reactants to products, is exactly equal to the rate of the reverse reaction from products to reactants. And so when we get that particular moment where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, Then we have what we call an equilibrium. And the equilibrium is dynamic, which means that you don't just have this happen and then pow, the reaction is done. It continues doing this until you have, um, uh, well, it continues doing this indefinitely, really. If you let the reaction go for long enough and you have enough reactant and product to make that happen. Okay, the way we tend to think about equilibrium is we tend to think about it not as just the way we put it in the book where we have uh, equilibrium, the rate of the forward re reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, but we also tend to think of equilibrium in terms of constants. So there is something called the equilibrium constant. It's a constant, so it's the same, the same temperature at least, and it's labeled by capital K. Okay, what K can be equal to is it could be equal to uh, the rate, right? So what we tend to think about here is there's a constant that governs the rate of the forward reaction, and there is a constant that governs the rate of the reverse reaction, right? And here you have the forward reaction over the reverse reaction, okay? That's kind of the sense of what's going on with K. Okay, to understand these little k's better, the rate constants, you would have to have some knowledge about kinetics. And um, if you have knowledge about kinetics, great. If you don't, then we're not going to think about uh, large k, the equilibrium constant, this way most of the time anyway, so don't worry about it. Okay, the way we're going to think about it is we're going to think about it in terms of values for specific uh, reactants and products in the balanced chemical reaction. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have, so let's erase this for a minute here. What we're gonna have is if we had a generic formula, let's say we had this generic formula, where these little letters, the lowercase letters, are talking towards the coefficient, the stoichiometric coefficients for each of those. Sorry, I'm getting my little rag here so that I can erase things. The stoichiometric coefficients are signified by the lowercase letters. I have the capital letters here are talking about a reactant or product. Okay, so that can be a compound or an element, but it's designating some reactant or product. Then if I wanted to find Kc, Kc is simply the C means concentration values. 
it's going to be the concentration of each of these reactants and products. The problem is, I'm about to label this totally wrong. You would put the constant, let me do a general moment. You do the concentrations of the products multiplied by one another to the power of their coefficients over the concentrations of the reactants to the power of their coefficients. Okay, here these brackets are meaning essentially molarity. Okay, so that's a concentration value specific to what we're talking about. Okay, in this particular reaction, what would Kc be? Kc would be equal to, let's see if you can see this. Yeah, you can. Awesome. Would it be equal to the products, right? So the concentration of C to the power of little c, the concentration of D to the power of little d over the concentration of A to the power of little a, and the concentration of B to the power of little b. Okay, so Kc would look this look look like this. We also could do this in terms of pressures um, if we have gases, and so we can do a different equilibrium constant that it's very much the same kind of idea. We call that Kp to signify pressures, and that would just be the exact same thing, but it would be the partial pressure of C to the power of little c, the partial pressure of the product D to the power of little d, and the partial pressure of A to the power of little a times the partial pressure of B to the power of little b. Okay? So, in general, when we're talking about equilibrium constants, we're usually talking about the concentration values because we tend to think about things in terms of concentration values. And, as sometimes we do in pressures, um, there's a relationship between Kc and Kp. It's given by an equation. We'll talk about that in a separate video. But you can totally relate these two if you need to. Um, and you're going to be writing out a lot of equilibrium constants and then calculating some things based off of those. Okay? So let's do the equilibrium constant for this one, just to wrap it up here. In terms of this particular equation, we have sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. If I wanted the Kc for that, then I would simply put the products, right? So the concentration of whatever the product is to the power of its coefficient, which is 2, over the concentration of each reactant to the power of their uh, their coefficients for SO2, it's 2. For O2, it's 1, so I don't have to write anything. Okay? So, in terms of looking at these, equilibrium constants are something that's a really basic thing that you're going to need to write out quite a lot for any equation that's given. Okay? The idea here as well is that in this uh, equilibrium constant expression, I kept all of the products in the reactants. And the reason why is because this is actually a homogeneous reaction. It, we think of it as a homogeneous reaction, which is, uh, or a homogeneous equilibrium. And the idea here is that it's homogeneous because all of the states are the same, right? So they're all gases. So when we have reactants and products that are gases, we put them into the equilibrium expression because they actually change enough for us to measure. That's also true of aqueous. So if these were all AQs, then I could also put them into the equilibrium constant expression. When we have a heterogeneous equilibrium, which means that we have mixed states, so we would have gases, solids, liquids, AQs, so on and so forth, then only, the trick there is that only the gases and the aqueous reactants and products are considered as part of the equilibrium con uh, constant. When we talk about liquids and solids, they just don't change enough for us to really be able to measure well. And so they are not included in the equilibrium constant expression. All right, until next time.